All right, next question, and Ms. Farrell, your turn to respond first. What is your position on the need for stricter gun control laws? Well, I suspect you're going to hear so many critical of my Republican uh, friend here. Uh, there's no question that we need to do more when it comes to gun control. It is absolutely tragic to read about the number of deaths, accidental deaths, deaths involved with violence in our urban centers. And this administration, and frankly, Chris's leadership, are so closely tied with the National Rifle Association that if anyone in this room is serious about seeing gun control legislation move forward in the next Congress, that alone should be a reason for voting for me. Because Chris is going to cast his vote for the same leadership that we have right now. And Dennis Hasker, the Speaker of the House, and the Majority Leader have a perfect 100 record from the National Rifle Association. How many people think we're going to see more gun control legislation come through a Congress with a leadership that have a 100% rating from the National Rifle Association? Mr. Shea? Did you hear any solution? Did you hear any proposal? <laughs> I'm going to just keep saying it. No, just to lack new leadership. We need to require child safety locks on all handguns, close the gun uh, show loophole, hold parents criminally liable if they allow children access to guns, any adult who allows a child access to a gun, extend the ban on juvenile possession of handguns to include semi-automatics, impose a lifetime ban on gun ownership for juveniles who commit violent crimes, reinstate a three-day waiting period for handgun purchase, and large capacity ammunition magazines. That's what I think you need to do. And when we passed the assault weapons ban a few years ago, it passed by one vote. I was the lead Republican who helped get it passed. Mr. Martin? If you think that my opponents disagree with each other about this issue, you're wrong. They agree virtually completely. The NRA gave my Republican opponent an F, probably would have given her an F as well. They both want to control your right to protect yourself. Approximately two million murders, rapes, and assaults are prevented each year because of the use or the threatened use of guns by the potential victim. The fact that we allow guns, the fact that people can have guns, results in less crime. If you look across states that allow more concealed carry laws and allow guns to be held by people who own them, there is less crime. Because criminals are not stupid. If they see a neighborhood where people have a lot of guns and a neighborhood where people have no guns, which one do you think they'll rob? Now, not only is it constitutional for us to own our guns, there should be no restrictions on what kind of guns you can own, as long as they're for defensive purposes. And what kind of a gun is for defensive purpose? Basically anything. A nuclear weapon is not because it's unstable and it could cause harm by itself. A gun keeps you alive. If you have to wait for the police, by the time you're calling 911, someone is either hurt or dead. A gun is a way for you to protect yourself. When someone comes to your house and they have a gun and you don't, you're at a disadvantage. If you abolish all gun ownership laws, if you have complete gun control, which I'm sure both of my opponents would enjoy, what do you think will happen? We've seen it happen in other countries, when finally what's called victim disarmament, right? The victims don't have the guns. Criminals continue to have guns because they're illegal anyway. What do they care? They're not going to register something? Who cares? The amount of homicides caused by guns increases when you limit the gun ownership by people. I support a complete repeal on all gun control laws. I think guns save lives. I think it should be your choice and your decision whether to own it or not. Your children are far more likely to die in a neighbor's pool by drowning than by any accidental guns. Children don't often run into each other with knives, and we don't have knife control laws. The, the Constitution was created for a reason. There's, we're allowed to defend ourselves, and I oppose any restriction on our abilities to do so. Thank you. I feel, I've so enjoyed our, our debates, I really have, but I've got to disagree with you so strongly on this issue. For eight years I was responsible for the town of Westmore. I 
had looked in the eyes of our police officers, I have looked in the eyes of our police chief, and I can only tell you that guns are dangerous in the wrong hands, and, I, and it's absolutely imperative that we have controls. We have more gun violence in this country than in Canada. I don't think we're that dissimilar. We have got to get a control on this. And I'm going to say it again, folks, because it's very simple. Chris has just given you a list. I could have given you a list. My point is that list will remain a list as it has for years, unless we change the leadership, especially in the House of Representatives. Anything else on this issue? Uh, Mr. Shanks, go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I, I don't think anybody should be surprised to hear that the police want people to have less guns. That's only natural. But it's not up to the police to determine our rights. It's up to us. Those rights have been determined. We have the right to protect ourselves. It's in the Constitution. If you want to try to force an amendment down our throats, you're welcome to do so, but you can't circumvent it. Mr. Shea? I believe that people have a constitutional right to have arms, and I believe the government has a constitutional right uh, to regulate it. And uh, all of the suggestions I made are quite simple and don't in any way deprive people of guns. They can have rice, rifles, they can have pistols, and so on. The three day waiting period is so that we know if someone, in fact, has a criminal record. We don't want a criminal to have a weapon. Uh, dealing with gun shows where we've had people literally sell hundreds of guns to one individual for what purpose? And so the, the answer is we can be sensible, we can be smart. We can allow people to have their constitutional right to bear arms, and at the same time, we can protect our public and particularly our kids. Uh, just one quick thing. Um, if either of my opponents could please point me to that area of the Constitution that allows them to control my guns, I, I have never seen it. I do know there's a second amendment. I haven't seen one that allows Congress or, or the government to uh, regulate guns. Ready for the next question? 